Hi, my name is Andy, and I'd like to welcome you to the beta version of the Hopnox audio tool. Here you'll be able to use flash-based recreations of famous audio gear to create your own sounds and use them in your own compositions. Let's get started by looking at the layout when you first log in to the audio tool. You'll see three rows of objects that you'll be able to use to manipulate your sound. At the very top, you have the mixer. This controls all of the sounds that actually come out of your speakers. Below these are three synthesizers we have at our disposal, and underneath those are two rows of pedals, which can manipulate the sounds that come out of those synthesizers. To connect objects, there are inputs and outputs on all of the instruments and effects on the desktop. Inputs are displayed with an arrow pointing in, while outputs are displayed with an arrow pointing out. If you want to hear an instrument, such as the drum machine in the center of the screen, you'll need to actually click and drag a connection from the output of that instrument into the input of the mixer. The mixer is managed by controls at the bottom of the screen. To start playing something, such as the drum machine that is now connected to the mixer, click on Play. You can adjust the tempo with the BPM or beats per minute control in the center. Shuffle controls how much you want the tempo to bounce like a swing or a jazz song or stay on even hits like a dance tune. It's best to experiment with this to understand what that sounds like. Next to Shuffle you can add a click track and adjust the volume of that click track. Before we move on to creating sounds, let's review some of the shortcuts which will help you navigate through the desktop quickly. First, by holding down Shift A, you get an overview window of the space. You can click on this window to cut to a specific view in your environment. There are also three keyboard shortcuts which will let you zoom in and out. Shift 1, Shift 2, and Shift 3. You can also rearrange objects in the space by clicking and dragging them. You'll notice that grid lines appear to help you establish boundaries and to align your desktop. Alright, let's take a look at the mixer. Below each input you'll see two knobs. The top controls the volume, or overall loudness, of that input. The second is the panning, or the stereo location of the sound. If I want to have a sound, such as this drum kit, go all the way to my left ear, I'm going to turn the panning knob all the way to the left. Similarly, if I want the sound to come all the way to the right ear, I can turn the knob all the way to the right, or anywhere in between. Now that we have a basic understanding of the functionality of the mixer, let's take a look at those three silver objects directly below it. Each of these are sound sources. These are things that are actually going to generate the sounds we will manipulate with all of the other pedals. Let's start by looking at the TR-909, the big silver drum machine in the center of the screen. The 909 is a programmable drum machine that allows you to create beats based on specific instruments in a standard drum kit. There is going to be a pattern that starts right away when you first turn it on. We have several presets to start with if you don't feel comfortable creating one. But let's try and create one, just so we see how it works. To select which pattern you will be editing, take a look at the small buttons underneath the two rows of knobs. The Pattern Bank system allows you to organize beats you create into pattern banks, or directories. This program will default to Pattern Bank A, Pattern 4. This is a fine place to start. Let's clear out what we have there and start programming our own beat. Take a look at the three small buttons on the far left side of the 909. You'll see Scale, Clear, and Shuffle on or off. Click on Clear. Okay, we're ready to start composing our beat. Let's take a look at the instruments we have to choose from. From left to right, we have bass drum, snare drum, low tom, mid tom, high tom, a rim hit, a clap, a hi-hat that's closed, a hi-hat that's open, a crash cymbal, and a ride cymbal. Under each instrument, you'll see a button to select that instrument. Let's select the bass drum. Once you select an instrument, you can determine on the pattern when it plays by clicking on the keys at the bottom of the 909, such as this. We have a bass drum beat. Let's add a snare. Again, select the instrument, and then click along the track when you want the drum to play. You'll notice that the pattern plays for 16 beats and then repeats itself. You can actually adjust how long you want the pattern to go before you repeat. To do so, take a look at the number 16 on the far left side, on the same row where you selected your pattern bank and pattern. By default, it sets to repeat after a full 16 beats, which is the length of a keyboard below you but you can let it go as low as 1 or as high as 64 beats before it cycles through. To adjust a pattern that's more than 16 beats long, you'll need to use the edit range keys, 
just to the right of where you are now. By default, the keys below are set to go from 1 to 16. But if you click on 32 in the edit range row, the keys will edit beats 17 through 32, and so on. Two quick words on how to modify the tonal qualities of the beat, and then we'll move on to the next synthesizer. First, if you hold down the shift key when you click to trigger an instrument in that bottom row, you'll notice the key lights up a little bit brighter. This means it'll play an accented beat like this. Listen to the second snare hit in this pattern. Second, the knobs below each instrument at the top of the 909 modify the tonal qualities of that particular piece's sound. For example, with the bass drum, you can modify the drum's tone, the drum's overall volume, the attack, or intensity at which the drum hits, and the decay, or how long the drum sounds after it's been hit. There are different controls to represent the unique characteristics of each part of a drum kit. Go ahead and experiment with those knobs to see which works best for you. Okay, we have a drum beat we like. Let's add a bass line underneath it. To do so, look at the instrument just to the left or to the right of the drum machine. These are identical. This is the TB303, a classic bass synthesizer. Again, by default it's set to pattern bank A, pattern 1. To clear this pattern, click on the button in the bottom left hand corner of the console. Don't forget, if you want to hear the instrument as you're playing it, you'll have to route it into the mixer by clicking and dragging a link from the output of the 303 to an input on the mixer, and then adjusting the panning and volume. Navigating the 303 is a little bit different than the drum machine to its right. Let's take it step by step. On the left hand side, you control how many beats there will be in a cycle before it repeats. Again, by default this is set to 16, but we can modify it to be anywhere from 1 to 64. Rather than the 909, which shows you 16 beats in a row, the 303 focuses its controls around a single point in time. To move forward or backward in time, click on the next or previous buttons on the right-hand side of the console. With each step in the pattern, you'll determine what key is being played by clicking on the key on the keyboard. You can turn a note on or off by clicking the button in the upper right-hand corner of that area. Other options with the note including turning on an accent, which makes the note play slightly louder than the others, sliding the note from one note to the next, or transposing it up or down an octave to give additional range to your bass line. To move the next note in the pattern, simply click the next button on the right hand side of the console. The screen right above it will tell you what pattern you're on. This might seem a bit complicated at first, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes quite easy and fun to create intricate and interesting bass lines with the two 303s at your disposal. Before we move on, let's take a look at the few controls at the top of the 303. The six knobs adjust the tonal qualities of the synthesizer as a whole, tuning it higher or lower, adjusting the cutoff frequency, which changes how harsh the notes sound in the synthesizer, resonance, which adjusts some of the aftertouch qualities of the notes, the treble envelope, which cuts off the higher frequencies in the bass line, the decay, or how long the note stays after it's hit, and accent, or how strong each note sounds in the bass line. I could describe these to you, but it's best to experiment. Remember, the whole point is to have fun. Okay, we know how to navigate the space. We have a drum beat we like, and a bass line. It's time to talk about those effects pedals. Pedals intercept the signal traveling from one of our drum or bass synthesizers and changes it in some way before continuing to the mixer and eventually to our ears. If I want to use this detuning pedal, for example, Instead of clicking and dragging straight from the 303 and into the mixer, I can click and drag a connection from the bass synthesizer to the pedal, and then from the pedal to the mixer. Remember, you can link any number of pedals before the sound travels to the mixer. Keep in mind that order is important, however. Think of the sound as traveling from the synthesizer to the mixer. Every stop along the way happens in sequence. By changing the order of pedals, you can significantly modify the sound. The pedals you have at your disposal here include a detuning pedal, a delay pedal, a delay pedal that modifies the pitch and the echoes of the delay, a flange pedal which adds a unique washing characteristic to the sound, reverb which makes the beat sound like it's coming from a large open room, a parametric equalizer to specifically adjust the volume of the high, medium, and low frequencies, and a good old fashioned tube distortion pedal to add some crunch to your tone. You get two of each of these pedals, so you can use them in any combination you see fit. Rather than tell you what these do specifically, again, I'll leave it up to you to explore. 
Thank you very much for using the Hobnox audio tool. We hope you find it very enjoyable. We're going to be adding new instruments and growing this area soon, so please do keep checking back. This is Andy at Hobnox. Thank you for listening. Take care. Thank you.